Mm. Right now, today I'm going to show you how to um, roll up paper inserts for solitary bees. Um, these are Japanese knotweed stems that I've cut to length. Much longer than probably I need, but it's, that's better than nothing. And so what I do is I've got some brown paper which I've used from parcel packaging and ironed it out flat so it's nice and easy to do. And a piece of plastic, like a knitting needle. So I need to roll it on. So, this is how I do it. It's a bit fiddly. And then just roll it as tightly like that. And once you've done it a few times, you can then cut it off. Like that. Push it to the end. And then pop it down inside this, which has actually got a got a bottom to it anyway, because that's where the uh, node on the the plant was and that's a little bit longer than I want so we'll just push it right down cut the end off with the scissors and there you are there's your little insert so in the end of the year when they filled this up and covered the end in mud um, about November you can just pull this out and uh, unroll it and then you can inspect and clean your little cocoons. <laughs> Do another one. There we go. You can use um, any finished paper that's nice and clean. It doesn't have any print on it, preferably. You know, um, paper that you use for the printer can be used but you know this is this is free and uh, fairly nice and easy to use. This one's a slightly smaller hole so it requires a more careful pushing down. You don't want to mess up the paper too much and it comes out the end. You see that one hasn't got a stop. So Oh. Alright, I've pushed it through right. Now it's nice and flat on the end. There's my mud already. Um don't want it too wet and you don't want it too dry. If it's too wet it will shrink and then the end will fall out once you put it in the bee house. And they prefer to have a stop on the end so they can't see daylight. So choose the less decent end out of the two. So first of all, cut off the bit that's too long. And that one's not too bad. So we'll leave it at that and just finish the end off here. And then, oh, this one begins to split a bit. Let that dry a bit. Um, I'll just pop it in something for a few, a few hours and then it's ready for the bees to use. Just do one more. Okay, find a nice tube. There we go, that one's not bad. Wash that in. There's the end. Comes up to the back there, and then you can cut this end right off. Doesn't matter if it's sticking out a little bit, in fact, it's preferable because um, then it makes it easy for you to grab. Because once it's in there, and the bees have started pushing gungy stuff on there, it tends to stick a bit and sometimes the slugs will get in there and start eating the paper as well, it's another thing you've got to watch, they love paper and uh, they will crawl up onto the nest 
depending on where, well, it, wherever it is, they'll crawl up there and find it and start chewing away. And what you don't want, of course, is them to start eating the grubs. So I go out there and just check at night, and make sure there's no slugs getting in there. Oh! <laughs> There we are, that's one's done. We'll put that in there, that's done. And there you go. There's your nest tubes for the bees.